Can you just clap in front of your face? All right. Thank you. Got your impulse response there. <laughs> Humans have always been changing their environments through the tools that they build. I guess since the dawn of time, right? The second we had a spear, it changed the course of, of who we are as humans. When you first hear about neurotechnology, it may sound unnatural. I think it's the next step of how humans use their brain to develop something to make their brain even more uh, impactful in their lives. It's not a dream. It's not science fiction. It is possible to create a direct interface to the brain. Our brains are stuck in our head. <laughs> and everything that we do in our lives kind of comes out of our brain through the nerves in our spinal cord and our hands and our bodies and um, we interact with the world that way. A number of years ago scientists said well what if there is another way? What if we could develop a technology and create a new communication channel out of our heads? There's millions and millions of neurons, and when you think about doing something, those neurons become active. Let's put sensors in and on the brain and uh, record that activity in real time. We develop computer algorithms that interpret the moment-to-moment -moment activity that comes out of the brain, and we translate that into action in the world that's around us. Jan is living with paralysis from the neck down. She can't move any of her limbs. Jan became one of the first pioneers of neurotechnology. She had these sensors placed in and on her brain, and she was able to think about moving a robotic arm. She uh, reached out and grabbed a bar of chocolate, and she fed herself chocolate on her own just by thinking about it. And for her to do that on her own, it, it was a life-changing moment. It's not just about the technology. It's not about all of the sensors and the algorithms. Those are just the tools and the techniques. It's how that neurotechnology changes the lives of people. One that I think about a lot is memory. We capture our family history by pictures, right? Or writing a note. Pictures don't have all of the intricate details of what you felt while you were experiencing those things. What if we could capture a memory? And what if we could transfer a memory from one person to another? With the current media and current forms of storytelling, you get one story and that's what goes out to the world. Knowing that every brain is a little bit different, right, because it's shaped by experience, it's shaped by who you are, maybe you could tailor those stories in a way that works for each individual brain. Think about empathy. How can we walk in each other's shoes a little bit more? I think of all the problems in the world that are associated with not having empathy or not being able to see somebody's perspective truly. I would love to solve that problem. There's been a lot of evolution of the technology over the last 10 or 15 years. We're trying to build fully implantable devices that you would never know that a person actually had one of these interfaces. What if there was a day where you didn't need a brain surgery to have one of these neurotechnologies or use one of these neurotechnologies? What if it was as natural as uh, getting braces? <laughs> We're gonna learn so much more when many people may have access to neurotechnology. I'm a technologist by training, but I see that the impact of what we are doing is much more than the technology. We could transform just what it means to be human.